This is the sixth and final section of chapter three on continuous distributions. And this section is modeling with the continuous uniform distribution. So now might be a good uh, point to actually look at all the distributions that you've learned so far. So you've got the normal distribution, Poisson distribution, negative binomial, and geometric. So all of these ones in blue, all examples of discrete distributions. Before you did this chapter, the only continuous distribution you would have known about is the normal distribution. And now we add to that another continuous distribution, which is the uniform or rectangular distribution, which we can represent like this. I don't think we've done it yet so far. And the two parameters in here are basically the interval or the values where our probability starts and where our probability finishes. And we know we're gonna have a uniform or constant probability over this interval. And I thought it'd be useful here to put a recap of all we know about the uniform or rectangular distribution. So the PDF, CDF, how we find the mean and how we find the variance. Example 22. The trunk of a small tree varies in diameter from 10 centimeters at the bottom to 2 centimeters at the top. The tree is cut horizontally at a randomly chosen point, and the radius r of the cross section is modeled as r being a uniform distribution with the parameters 1 and 5. So these are like the two ends of the probability. Find the expected value of the area a of the cross section of the tree. OK, now we need to be careful in this question because it might be tempting to work out the expected radius. But the question says the expected value of the area. So that's what we need to work out. What is the expected area? So we don't work out the expected radius and then square it and times it by pi. That would be incorrect. Asking for the expected area. So that's what we're going to find out. OK, so we could write that actually as the expected E area. Now, the area, since we know the radius is R and that's uniformly distributed, we can write it as pi R squared, pi R squared, since basically the area is circular with radius R. Now, since uh, pi is a constant, we can use this rule that the expected value of a times x plus b is equal to a times e of x plus b. And we treat the pi here like we do the a, which means we can write e of ax as a times e of x. So we can write this as pi times by the expected value of the radius squared. And we can do that because pi is a constant and it's like the letter A in this rule. Now we need to think where we find E of R squared or E of X squared, we see it in the variance formula. So we know that the variance of R would be equal to E of R squared minus the mean squared. So that's E of R all squared. That's where you see like e of x squared, e of r squared there. So what we're going to do is just rearrange it to make e of r squared the subject because that's what we want to work out. And that'll be e of r squared is equal to the variance of r plus the mean squared. So now we need to work out what the variance is and what R is. This is a uniform distribution and the value of A is 1 and the value of B is 5. So E of R squared is going to be equal to the variance. So that's B minus A all squared over 12. And the mean is A plus B all over 2. Now we need to square that because we've got the mean squared in the formula. And that's just a matter of substituting those values. So 5 minus 1 all squared over 12 plus a plus b 
over to all squared. So from there, we will get four squared over 12. So we'll get 16 over 12 plus um, six over two, and that's all squared. And that gives us 31 over three. But we need to remember that actually uh, we want to find the expected area. We found E of R squared. So we need to make sure that we times that by pi because we stuck the pi at the front. So our final answer would be 31 pi over three. And I'll just write down here that that's the uh, expected area. Example 23, the length of a pencil is measured to the nearest centimeter. Write down the distribution of the rounding errors R. So first of all, when you round to the nearest whole number, in this case, it's to the nearest centimeter, the rounding error could be up to plus or minus 0.5, in this case, 0.5 centimeters from the actual length of the pencil. Right, so here's an example. If after rounding, the length is given, the length of the pencil is given as 15 centimeters after it's been rounded to the nearest centimeters, the actual length of the pencil could be any length between 14.5 centimeters and 15.5, obviously not including 15.5. So these values are the upper and lower bound of 15. And we can write it as an inequality like this. So less than or greater than or equal to 14.5 centimeters, but less than 15.5. Now this question is about the rounding errors R. So the rounding error is going to be uh, from 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.5. Now also we can assume that the lengths of the pencils are uniformly distributed between 14.5 and 55. 15.5 centimeters therefore the errors the rounding errors will also be uniformly distributed so that gives us this final answer here the rounding errors are uniformly distributed between the interval of minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5 so that's our distribution example 24 Write down the name of the distribution you would recommend as a suitable model for each of the following situations. So part A, we have the masses of 200 gram tins of tomatoes produced on a production line. Now we would expect most of the 200 gram tins to be uh, around a 200 gram mark, some to be um, a bit more, some to be a bit less. But really, the vast majority should be around that 200 gram mark. So what we're going to have is a normal distribution where the mean there is 200 grams. Now, we don't know what the standard deviation or the variance is. So the type of distribution would be a normal distribution. So we would probably have something like X is normally distributed with a mean of 200 grams with uh, a given variance. Part B, the difference between the true length and the length of metal rods measured to the nearest centimeter. Now you'll notice this is similar to the last one and it's these types of questions which are sort of rounding error type questions and they're always gonna be modeled by uniform distribution. So. The way this is going to look is something like this, where if we're rounding, our, our value could be anywhere between minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5 uh, difference between the actual length and the true length. And that distribution is uniform. The probability of getting a particular size error is uniform between the values of negative 0 
and plus 0.5. So um, here we could say continuous uh, uniform or just uniform distribution or continuous rectangular rectangular distribution. And if I was to write this distribution, uh, actually let's change this to the letter Y since we've used X already. So this would be Y uniform distribution between A and B and here it would be negative 0.5 to plus 0.5. So you should now be able to do exercise 3F on pages 80 to 82 and then the mixed exercise at the end of the chapter. Just a quick recap here. Uh, we've done a couple of rounding error type questions and these are usually a continuous uniform distribution between negative 0.5 and plus 0.5, that's if it's been rounded to the nearest unit, nearest whole number. And be careful because even though the length of something, let's say pencils, may be normally distributed, the difference between the true length and the rounded length is uniformly distributed.